Hi, everybody. Along with Skip Carey, this is Pete Van Weeren welcoming you to Candlestick Park in San Francisco, where this afternoon the Atlanta Braves begin the final leg of their longest road trip of the season, the first of a two-game series with the San Francisco Giants. And Skip, so far, a pretty good trip with a 6-4 and four record, but this two-game series will really tell what kind of a road trip it'll be. Yeah, the Braves are talking sweep, and well, they should be. If they can win these two, they'll go home winning two-thirds of the game. They'll be 8-4, and four, and they've got to they've shake off what was a real heartbreaker yesterday. Two tough losses in Los Angeles. Yesterday's game and Saturday's game. Braves trying to bounce back today against the Giants team that's been ice cold all season long. They've lost 10 of their last 11, and they're buried in last place in the division. We'll be back with the starting lineups and all the action right after this. Here's the way they line up for the ball game this afternoon. For Atlanta, Cardell Washington leads it off in right field. Rafael Ramirez will play shortstop. And he will bat second. Dale Murphy in center field hits third. Bob Horner at first base bats cleanup. Terry Harper will play left field and hit fifth. Ken Obergfeld at third base hits sixth. Second baseman Glenn Hubbard bats seventh. Bruce Benedict will do the catching. He'll hit eighth. And Zane Smith will do the pitching. He's four and four, an earned run average of three points. 8-8 eight, eight for the Giants. Dan Gladden leads it off. He's in center field. Manny Trio will play and bat second. Chili Davis in right field hits third. Jeff Leonard, the left fielder, bats cleanup. Bob Brindley will play first at fifth. Chris Brown, the third baseman, hits sixth. Our old buddy Alex Trevino catches at seventh. Jose Uribe is the shortstop hitting eighth. Mike Pruko will do the pitching. He's 5-5, five and five, a 2.99 earned run average. Your umpires behind the plate, Jerry Davis, Steve Ripley at first, Terry Tata at second, and Jerry Crawford will call the plays third. Defensively, you see the giant alignment, and Claudel Washington strides toward the batter's box. And as he stands in, standing in with the play-by-play -play story, once again, here's Pete Van Weeren. Thank you, Skip. Washington will lead it off batting 276 with seven home runs and make that nine home runs and 23 RBIs. Facing Mike Kruko, a record of five and five, a good earned run average, 2.99. Just about every pitcher on the Giants staff has a good earned run average. Their team ERA is 2.97. Lifetime Kruko, seven and six against Atlanta. No decisions against the Braves this year. First pitch on the way to Washington, taking high ball one. 108, 108, start, eight time temperature, 80 plus degrees. That is out of play, one and one the count. Very unusual day here at Candlestick Park. It is kind of a warm and muggy one, which you don't very often get in San Francisco. 81 degrees, game time temperature. Count is now two and one. That famous Candlestick Park wind that we talk so much about, not blowing at all right now. Here's the two on delivery and the breaking ball is high three and one. That'll be out of play. Braves right now kind of stuck in no man's land in fifth place. They are four games behind fourth place Houston. They are seven games ahead of sixth place San Francisco. And down on strikes is Washington. Kruko got him on a fastball. That'll bring up Rafael Ramirez batting 260 with three homers, 29 RBIs. He doesn't have the elbow wrap today for the first time in several weeks. That'll be out of play in the first base seat zone one. There are players who would not have played with the ailing elbow that Ramirez had, but he wanted to play despite the injury. That's out of play, nothing in two. Dale Murphy on deck. Slowly toward short, Uri Bay up and throwing. And there are two down. 
So the first two Braves hitters retired here in the top of the first. Now the center fielder, Dale Murphy. He had a mammoth home run in yesterday's game, hitting 290 for the year now with 18 homers, 51 RBIs. He's number two in the league of Pedro Guerrero in the home run department. Pedro, of course, hit that 19th homer of the season to beat the Braves yesterday. Bad news today, huh? The crab is not going to be here. Yeah, disappointed to hear that. Kind of a cozy crowd here today, too. Can't be more than 4,000 people or so here. Immediate family and friends only. Now Murphy steps out. Well, the Giants going through one of those years where they've won only 27 games, lost 48. They are way down in the division. Despite the fact that their pitching staff has the best earned run average in the league. Breaking ball missed by Murphy. It's two and two. That's two years running if it winds up that way. The Pirates last year had the best ERA and finished horribly far back in the Eastern Division. That sort of puts a question mark after that myth about pitching being 80% of the game. Here's the 2 2. Took a funny hop and got by Chris Brown. Murphy reaching with a two out single. So the Braves have a base runner. Murphy at first. Two men out. Bob Horner stepping in. You see the ball come up on him. I think even if he makes the diving play, he's not going to throw out Murphy. Horner, a 261 hitter for the year. 11 homers, 35 RBIs. Out of play, nothing and one. And the 0-1 on the way. Caught the outside corner 0-2. This is good hitter's park. It's 335 down the lines, but only 365 to the power alleys. 400 feet to straightaway center. Here's the 0-2. Line toward right. But Jilly Davis is right there. And the inning's over. No runs, one hit, and one left. We go to the bottom half of the first with no score. As a look at the Braves defensively as we go to the bottom half of the first an outfield of Harper Murphy in Washington the infield has Obergefell Ramirez Hubbard and Horner Bruce Benedict doing the catching again today and on the mound left hander Zane Smith who brings a four and four record a three point eight eight earned run average into this one there's his career record one of those victories and it came this year against San Francisco Zane's only major league shutout the Giants hitting only two fifteen as a team. What is it their coach Rocky Bridges said they've seen more zeros this year than the Japanese Air Force had in World War II. They've already been shut out 10 times. I have a question for you professor. Okay. Being a homeowner and all that. How do they make the grass look like it looks on the end? Don't ask me. You're talking to the wrong person there. This is Dan Gladden who's having a miserable time of it this year batting only 219 with two homers 15 RBIs. Some very low batting averages in this giant order you'll see them all afternoon. Zane Smith delivers and misses high ball one. This field is in excellent condition. Here's the 1-0, and that's a strike, 1-1. One and one. The Giants are playing almost all day games this year. I think the only day of the week they play a night game is Friday. But the poor record 
and attendance is down. One ball, two strikes. They keep bringing up the possibility here of building a new stadium in a better location. But nothing ever seems to come of it. They've talked about putting a dome on this stadium. Here's the one, two. Down to first hit by that pitch is Dan Gladden. Breaking ball down and in on him. He couldn't get out of the way. And he becomes a base runner. It's a curveball down and in, and he got it too far in. That's all. Got him right on the hit. Gladden needs to be watched. He's the top base stealer on the Giants with 20. And here's the veteran second baseman, Manny Trio, batting 223. No homers, 11 RBIs. On the outside corner for a strike, nothing and one. You look over the notes provided us by the Giants, and quite a few of their hitters have had pretty good strings recently, which is really the first time this year their hitting has come to life. But just when the hitters came to life, the pitching fell apart. They lost 10 games in a row. Well, you feel sorry for Jim Davenport, too. He's waited so long for a chance. He's trying to keep a sense of humor about the whole thing. Giants lost 96 games last year. Then Jim Davenport was named their new manager. The runner going on the 0-1, little tap toward second. Glenn Hubbard's only play will be the first in time. So Jim Davenport spent the entire winter going all over Northern California trying to pump up the fans for the upcoming 85 season. And he said that every speech he gave, he promised the fans, we're not going to lose 96 games this year, I'll promise you that. Jim says at least we're keeping our promise at the rate we're going, we're going to lose about 110. Here's Chili Davis batting 267 with seven homers and 30 RBIs. Gladden down at second now with one out. Line toward left center. Harper makes a nice running catch out there and back to second base goes Dan Gladden. That was a fine play. Took an extra base hit away from Chili Davis and saved a run. Two men out. You see, he really has to extend here to get to it. That ball was really smoked. So with two down, a runner at second. Here's the left fielder, Jeff Leonard. Leonard having a slow first half, batting 235, nine homers, 30 RBIs. No score, bottom half of the first. Zane Smith delivers. Fastball strike at the outside corner, nothing and one. You'll remember when the Braves had that long stretch without a complete game this year until Zane Smith pitched a shutout against San Francisco in Atlanta. One and one. Braves have still had only one other complete game, that one tossed by Rick Mailer. And the 1-1 one, one on the way. Fly ball pretty well hit center field. Murphy started in, but now he drifts back and reaches up and grabs it. And the inning's over. Nothing doing for the Giants. We've played one here at Candlestick Park, and we're scoreless. In the top of the second, it'll be Terry Harper, Ken Obertfell, and Glenn Hubbard. Batting for Atlanta. Harper, a 248 hitter on the year with six homers and 32 runs driven in. Butted down the third base side, but foul, nothing in one. Kruko's always been the kind of pitcher that 
Once he gets in a groove, he can be tough as the game goes on. If you get to him early, you'll see him knocked out of ball games a lot in the second or third innings. But if that doesn't happen to him, he very often pitches into the seventh, eighth, or ninth. Curve is in there. The count 0 and 2. That's his bread and butter pitch, that curveball. And the 0 2 coming outside. Now the 1 2 on the way. Breaking ball low and outside. 2 and 2. Some players are just unlucky players over their careers. Here's the 2 2 foul away. Every player that plays this or any other sport wants to be on a good team, a championship team. Well, Mike Kruko began his career with the Cubs. He came up in the majors with Chicago in the mid 70s when they were a terrible ball club, finishing last year after year. Count goes to three and two. He went over to the Phillies, but only for one year, then was traded to San Francisco. And the Giants have been a last place ball club. So Mike Kruko has spent a lot of time in his career with his team at the very bottom of the standings. Uribe on the first in time to retire Harper one down. And there are other guys. It doesn't seem to matter what team they play for, what kind of a year they have. That team always seems to be in postseason play. Reggie Jackson, yeah. a guy like that. Wherever he goes, that team wins. Here's Obergfell batting 287. One homer, 15 <laughs> runs driven in. Nothing and won the count. I guess Mickey Vernon was perhaps the classic example of the bad luck player. Here's the 0-1. Little tight one and one. Glenn Hubbard, the on deck hitter. Into left center field. Gladden coming over. Can't get to it. It drops in. Gladden knocks the ball down. Obergfeld trying for two. Here's the throw. It's off the mark. And it's a double for Ken Obergfell. Double number eight of the season for Obergfell. Hit number two of the game off Kruko. Yeah, Mickey Vernon won batting titles and everything. Mm -hmm. Always playing with those Washington Senator teams that didn't do much. Here's Glenn Hubbard. 229 hitter, three homers, 18 RBIs. Excuse me, but he was making eight, ten thousand dollars a year. Now, when you're unlucky, you're making six hundred thousand dollars a year and finishing last. A little bit high to Hubbard for a ball. One man out. Obert fell down at second. And the one-zero pitch coming over at the knees for a strike. One and one. Some contrast coming to this ballpark. Right after you've played at Dodger Stadium with those 40,000 crowds. Seems very quiet. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That just missed. 2-1. and one. Now the 2-1 on the way to Hubbard. He didn't get the breaking ball. It's 2-2. Two and two. Bruce Benedict on deck. Kruko deals the 2-2 and he struck him out. Second strike out of the game for Mike Kruko. And out number two here in the top of the second. So now it'll take a two-out hit from Benedict. Who is batting just 194 for the year? No homers, two RBIs. Strike in the outside corner, nothing at one. This has always been his ballpark, though. I recall a two home run game he had hit. He has hit well here. 
Here's the 0-1. Popped him up. Shallow left field. The shortstop Uribe back. The left fielder Leonard in. It'll be Leonard. And that's it for the Braves in the second. They get the double by Obergefell. Leave the runner at second. We go to the bottom half of inning two with no score. It is my task to inform you that this telecast is authorized under rights granted by the Braves, intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, the descriptions are the accounts of this game about the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves, and the Turner Broadcast System is prohibited. Bottom half of the second, Bob Brenly, Chris Brown, Alex Trevino do up against Zane Smith in a scoreless game. Brenly's number is starting to improve a little bit. He was down below 200 for some time this year. And he's a traditional Braves killer. One ball, no strikes. Here's the 1-0. Line, great play by Oberfeld. Well, he's got good instincts over at third. He does not run well, but he's got quick hands, very sure hands over there. Just like Brooks Robinson, outstanding third baseman who did not have great foot speed, but it's those quick reactions. One away in the second. Now the third baseman, Chris Brown, batting 252 with five homers, 23 RBIs. One ball, no strikes. Brown, born in Jackson, Mississippi, lives now in Los Angeles. He grew up in Los Angeles. Played in the same high school team as Daryl Strawberry. Over it fell again. And there are two down. Now former Brave Alex Trevino. Who's found the going rough this season. Batting only 160 with a couple of home runs and four RBIs. Talking with Alex when the Giants were in Atlanta. He plans to maintain his off-season home in the Atlanta area. Low and inside, ball one. No score, bottom half of the second. Base is empty, two men out. That caught the corner, one and one. Smith with a good fastball that moves away from right-hand hitters. He also has a very good curveball. Two and one, the count on Alex Trevino. And the two-one coming. That missed low and away. Three and one. Smith delivers the three-one and missed high and outside ball four. Down to first, Trevino. That's the first walk given up by Zane Smith. And it'll bring up the giant shortstop, Jose Uribe. He's batting 208 with one homer, 10 RBIs. Has a great glove on it short. But he hasn't hit much in on this ball club. It does matter. Some ball clubs get away with a shortstop that doesn't hit much because they have a lot of bats elsewhere in their lineup, but that's not the case for this team. One ball, no strikes. Trevino at first with two down. Unlike most catchers, you might see Trevino take off. He has very good running speed for a catcher. He hasn't attempted a stolen base yet this year. You might say, well, the pitcher's due up next, but Mike Kruko, a pretty good hitter. In fact, he's got one of the better batting averages in the starting lineup today. High in the air, down the line and right. Claudel Washington should get to it. And he does. That ball had a little more carry to it than it looked. 
But the inning's over. Nothing doing for the Giants. We've played two, and there's no score. In the top half of the third, it'll be Zane Smith, Claudel Washington, Rafael Ramirez do up for the Braves in a scoreless game. Smith, not a bad hitter, batting 125 this year. No homers, one RBI. Kruko deals. Hit foul off to the right. One way, batting averages don't always tell the story on a pitcher and how he hits. But if you look at the strikeouts, bad hitting pitchers will strike out about half the time. Smith has fanned only two times in 16 at bats. One and one. For third, Chris Brown has this one. One down. Not much happening in this game to this point. We go back to the top of the order, and Claudel Washington has struck out his first time. The pitchers have been in command thus far. To that end, we're going to start an hour earlier tomorrow and hope that be more life to the proceeding. Braves have two hits in the game. Giants don't have a hit yet. Washington came out of yesterday's game. They thought he might have had a little hamstring problem, but it felt much better today. And he rips that ball toward right. It'll drop for a base hit. Chili Davis gets it back to the infield, and there's the third Atlanta hit off Mike Kruko. One giant official had a pretty good line before the game. He said that it hasn't been that bad a year for the Giants. They lead the league in two things. Number one, innings pitched. And number two, they are on more teams' highlight films than any other team in the <laughs> National League. A runner at first with one down. Ramirez grounded to short his first time. One ball, no strikes. Washington might take off here. He's got seven steals and nine tries. Ramirez handles the bat pretty well. They might hit and run. The runner going to pitch to Ramirez. Hit foul down past third base coach Bobby Wine. So the count even one and one. Here's the look toward first by Kruko and the one one pitch coming. Filed off to the right. One ball, two strikes. Giants are averaging only 13,000 per home date. It doesn't look like they'll have that many here today, though. Here's the one-two to Ramirez. Popped him up foul territory, and there's a lot of that here at Candlestick Park. Bob Brindley will get to it. Washington holds it first. Two men out for Murphy. Murph had a base hit his first time up. He's now hit safely in five straight games. His bat beginning to come back a little bit on this trip. Well, that home run he hit yesterday in Los Angeles, he hasn't hit many further than that one. It almost got over the bullpen in left field. The runner goes. Murphy takes it low. The throw by Trevino will not get there. And stolen base number eight of the season for Claudel Washington. Gives the Braves another runner in scoring position. Count of one ball, no strikes on Murphy. Now Trevino out to make sure the signs with Kruko. I can't recall a day here in Candlestick Park with less wind 
It is an absolutely still day at the moment. Here's the 1 0 foul back. One and one. Two men out. Washington down at second. And a one one pitch. Misses low and inside two and one. Murphy has also had some big days in this ballpark. Of course he's had some big days in just about every ballpark. Here's the 2 1. There's a high fly ball foul down the left side. Brown gives it a chase, but this one will be up at the seats. And that evens the count 2 and 2. Washington gets his lead. Now Murphy steps up. Signs will be given again by Trevino. And the 2 2 pitch coming. Just missed outside. The count full, three and two. It's a good sign when Murphy takes that pitch. When he gets into one of his batting slumps, you'll very often see him chase that pitch that's low and away. Now a 3-2 pitch due. High and deep to right field. Davis going back, looking up. It is... Gone. Home run number 19 for Dale Murphy and the Braves take a 2 0 lead. <laughs> 19 homers, 53 RBIs now for Murphy. the 11th home run hit off Mike Kruko this year. And you see it again there as the count goes to 0-1 on Horner. Horner fly to right his first time. The curve drops in and the count 0-2. Murphy may be getting hot again. He now has seven hits in his last 16 at-bats. That ball sharply hit, but a good play by Chris Brown is throw across in time. And the inning over. But the Braves get on the board on the Dale Murphy home run. We go to the bottom half of the third. Atlanta leading now by a 2-0 score. Tonight on the Superstation, James Cagney stars, Dennis Weaver co-stars in the Gallant Hours. Based on true events surrounding Admiral William F. Halsey, famed World War II naval hero, that's the Gallant Hours tonight at 10 Eastern, right here on the Superstation. Bottom of the third, here's Skip. Okay, Pete, thank you. Mike Kruko leads it off, batting at 214. He has a couple of RBIs. He stroked three doubles this year. That will be easy. Oberfell throws him out. One pitch, one out in the third. And Dan Gladden will stand in. He was hit by a pitch his first time. Dale Murphy's homer has made it 2 nothing. Number 32. Gladden. Gladden at just 219. Vinder Blue, incidentally, got his 2,000th strikeout yesterday. As the Giants ended a 10 game losing streak by winning the second game of the doubleheader in Houston. Oh. 
He shortened the bunt, took it outside. He had 351 a year ago. He's 130 points below that this year. He didn't look like the kind of hitter that could happen to either. Mm -mm. Contact type hitter. Good speed. Well, look how much he has a bat choked up now. I don't know if it was just because he was shortening the bunt. No. He's almost a third of the way up that thing. At the knees on the outside edge. Downstairs, it's three and one. <laughs> Giants Boosters Club is traveling to Minneapolis for the All Star game in mid July. Gladden wasn't so sure himself, but it is ball four and walk number two for Zane Smith. Your attention, please. And Manny Trio stands in. Manny bounced to second his first time. Trio represents the potential tying run at the plate. As we watch this ball game, Pete, you made a great point before the game when we were having breakfast talking about the the job the gang over at cable news has done on this hostage crisis yeah we get cable news network at the hotel i was watching it for quite some time this morning and they really did a tremendous job very thorough coverage they're all to be congratulated i think what makes them so good is unlike the networks who have to condense everything into very brief reports read off the of teleprompters our guys on the field know how to ad lib and they'd better yeah take some time do to do job. it right That really is an amazing operation. How they make that thing fly, I still don't know. And that could not have been the easiest story in the world to cover either, with all the goings on. Runner going. Benedict's throw. He should be out by about 20 feet. He is. Well, whatever it was Bruce Benedict was doing wrong last year, he certainly has corrected it this year. He's cut down better than half of the attempted base stealers against him in recent games and Gladden's a good base stealer. He's only been caught five times stealing successfully 20 times. This was the sixth caught stealing and he was out easy. Got rid of it in a hurry with something on it. The trio back live lashes a foul ball into the seat. And the count goes to one and two. It's even now, two balls, two strikes. Braves lead it two nothing on a two-run shot by Dale Murphy in the top half of this third inning. Down the line and right, it's going to drop foul in the Giant bullpen. Two balls, two strikes. Kelly Davis waits on deck. <laughs> he stayed alive as he fought off the breaking ball. It's still two and two. And again, the two two. Well hit right center field can Claudel get there. Yeah, the ball comes back to him and the inning is over. Nothing doing in the third. No hits, no runs, no errors, nobody left. At the end of three, Braves two, Giants nothing.
Nothing and one is the count to Terry Harper as we rejoin you here in the top of the fourth. It's even now one and one. Harper bounced to short his first step. Check swing, foul back. Steve Bedrosian and Jim Gott will pitch the finale of this series tomorrow. 3.05 Eastern Time. That almost got budding author and Braves first base coach Bobby Dews. When is his story going to appear in Atlanta Weekly? Sometime this month, I think. I don't know if it was yesterday or... I guess he'll have to go on the talk show circuit then. I think one guy's enough. <laughs> A ball and two strikes. The count to Harper. There's a drive to deep left. Did he get enough of it? Leonard is at the wall and waves goodbye. It's 3 nothing Atlanta. That's the 12th home run ball thrown by Mike Kruko this year. Number seven for Terry is 33rd RBI. So far, so good. He gets a ball really up in the strike zone. Kruko wanted this pitch back as soon as he got rid of it. Look at that curveball. Hang it. Obergfell swings and misses. He doubled his first time, breaking ball outside, one and one. That ball is going to be out of play behind the giant dugout. Trevino gave it a look but had no chance. Harper has never driven in this many runs in a major league season, nor has he had this many homers. A ball, two strikes, the count. That ball is corked. There was another breaking ball, but 50 feet foul. Braves hitters really getting some good rips at Kruko in this game. And at the outset, he really looked good, I thought. But all of a sudden, his curveball isn't what it was. It was that time, and Obergfell knew it. Strikeout number three for Kruko. This is what Kruko wants to do with this pitch. He throws a lot of curveballs. Look at that thing drop. Hubbard was a strikeout victim his first time. Glenn hitting just 228 for the year. That will make the seats. Yuri Bay should throw him out and does. Here's Bruce Benedict. Number 20, catcher Bruce Benedict. Bruce flied to left his first time. Oh, and one, the count of the Atlantic catcher. Braves have some decisions to make in the immediate future. The 0-1 pitch. Cork to deep left field. Back goes Leonard again. He's at the wall and the inning is up. Benedict didn't miss getting it out of here by much. The Harper homer is the only hit, the only run. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 3-0 Braves.
We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. What a statistic. And the count to Chili Davis. The Yankees beat Toronto today 4 1. Joe Cowley, the former Brave, won it over Doyle Alexander, the former Brave. Dave Rigetti got a save. Montreal in 10 beat the Cardinals 3 2. The 1 1 started to go, held up. The curve was inside. Two balls in a strike. Zane Smith with a 3 0 lead in the fourth. It's three and one. He tried to stomp his swing, fouled it back. It's three and two. Against pitchers on the Brave staff, five, ten and a half or less, Davis is batting two thirty eight in his career. The payoff pitch. Strike three at the knees. He can't believe it, but he is pumped out of there, one away. Zane's Frustrating first. season for Giants hitters. And when you're having a frustrating year, you never seem to get a call the way you want it to go. Jeff Leonard is the batter. He flied to rather deep center field his first time. Three, five, and oh for the Braves. Oh, oh, and oh for the Giants. That curveball was a good one down and in. A ball and a strike. Field plays Leonard straight away. He started in the Dodger chain. Fly ball fouled on the right side. Atlanta Constitution sports writer Jerry Fraley just had himself paged in the press box. He does that just about every game. It's amazing. Yeah, there he and Chris Mortensen page each other. One and two, the count to Leonard. And that didn't miss by much. Two balls, two strikes. Don't forget the Braves are home Thursday night, the 4th of July, against the Mets at 7.40. Count stays two and two. That'll be a big night. They've got the fireworks show after the game, and you might want to get out there early. The Spirit of Atlanta Drum and Bugle Corps is going to perform before the game, and they are very good. Do we have pitching pairings for that yet? I haven't seen the Mets pitchers yet. Rick Mailer will start that game Thursday night for Atlanta. The way I had it figured, Dwight Gooden would work on Friday, but I'm not 100 percent sure. We should have that information tomorrow. I guess high, and it's three and two. Smith has walked a couple. He has struck out one. He has hit a batter. He didn't mean to. A little tap towards short. Ramirez gloves it and throws and got it. Two out. Good play by Rossi. Ball almost came out of his glove. Kind of hit the heel of the glove. He was just able to hang on to it. He got rid of it quickly with that strong, accurate throw that we've become so accustomed to seeing. Brindley lined hard to Obergfell his first time. The 
Did he go? No, it says first base umpire Steve Ripley. One ball, no strike. It's one and one. Bridges, the third base coach of the Giants, had to skip the rope to get out of the way. A ball, two strikes. Gene Garber crossed the foul line to come up with that foul ball. That might be trouble in short center. Hubbard can't get there. A blue pitch for Brindley. The first safety of the game. For the Giants and Chris Brown is the batter. Braves fan from Titusville, Florida, Mark Schneebly is here today. Brown bounced to third his first time. The Forbes family from Omaha here to root for the Braves. That was off his foot and down he goes and he is hurting. Brown will try to shake it off. He's really sting. Right off the top of the foot. Giants trainer comes to his aid, but there's really not much he can do. Maybe spray a little ethyl chloride on it. Former Atlanta resident, the Lance and Joe Schmidt and the children here today. One and one the count, runner at first, two out. Braves lead at 3-0, a two-run homer for Dale Murphy, a solo shot for Terry Harper. Line down the right side. That might be trouble. Let's see how far Bre the runner can go. Brindley will have to stop at third. Brown is into second. Head first. They're at second and third with two out. Brown went with this pitch. It was a fastball on the outside part of the plate. And he just went with it, slapped it to right field. And the Giants have their first scoring threat of the afternoon now as runners second and third, two down for Alex Trevino. Alex walked his first time. He's hitting 160 with two homers, four runs driven in. Second and third, the tying run at the plate. High and away, one ball, no strikes. Outfield plays Trevino slightly toward left. Curve into the dirt. Good play by Benedict. It's 2 0. Oh. Shortstop Jose Uribe is on deck. But they're threatened here in the bottom of the fourth. It curved him 3 and 0. Oh, now it's 3 and 1. So Trevino in the driver's seat here. The foul out of play. It was a fastball, and the count is full 3 and 2.
and we await the payoff pitch from Zane Smith. Here it is. That should do it. Easy hop for Hubbard, and the inning is over. So Smith gets Trevino to get out of trouble. Two hits, no runs. No airs, two left. We go to the fifth. Braves lead it 3-0. Fifth inning, Zane Smith will lead it up. Pete Van Wert and Skip Carey with you from Candlestick Park. So far, so good. Braves on top. Three nothing as you look at the tail of the tape. Smith corks one into center, and the fifth inning is off to a good start. Zane strokes his second hit of the year, and Cardell Washington is the batter. Cardell struck out in the first single, stole a base, and scored in front of Murphy's two-run blast in the third. So he is one for two. That's the sixth hit surrendered by Mike Kruko. Giants have played 500 baseball here in Candlestick. They're 18 and 18, but on the road, 9 and 30. Did he go? Yes. Jerry Crawford made the call from third base. Count even. Excuse we me. We spent a couple years with ball clubs that had those kind of road records back in the mid 70s, and that's a long season. But tails off now. I have compiled some similar road records myself. <laughs> One and two, the count. Let me get straight this straight. We've been gone two weeks. We get home at one o'clock Wednesday. Were well, you going out to dinner Wednesday night? Yes. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Whew. You're a man of great courage. love to join you, but I flat out can't afford it. The well is dry. <laughs> it's been a long trip. We've got a lot of day games, a lot of chances to go out and dine in some of the fine restaurants in the National League. That too. Did he go? Again, they asked for help. This time Crawford says no. Two balls, two strikes. Washington is out of there. That's strikeout number four. Kruko's had a strange game. Four strikeouts in less than five innings, but six hits and three runs. Ramirez is 0 for 2. He's bounced to short and popped to first. So we head for the wharf tonight, huh? Little seafood tonight. Ended, ended with a bang. Have plastic, will travel. Curve strike to Ramirez, 0 and 1. Playable. It's 0 2. Renner at first, one away. I'll be doing something when we get home Wednesday that you probably haven't done in 8 to 10 years. What's that? Get a haircut. <laughs> True. The one two pitch. Curve line off the pitcher's glove. It is, he steps on the bag. Safe at first. Stop break for Ramirez. Good play by Kruko. If he doesn't deflect that ball, it's into center field. Let's see, did they call him safe at second? I'll be darned. He must have missed the bag. I thought he had him. 
Well, let's look at it again. The ball hit off Kruko's glove. It slowed down a bit. But shortstop Jose Uribe gets to it. He never got the bag. He simply missed it. Now, he hasn't a, scored it as anything yet. He's a foot away from the bag. That might go as a base hit now. Well, here's Murph again. Upstairs, one ball, no strikes. It's a hit. That gets to the screen. They're at second and third, and the Braves have a chance to build up a sizable lead here in the top of the fifth. It's a wild pitch on Kruko. It has been a strange game for him. He's been in total control on some hitters. He's thrown two home run balls. Now they'll put Murphy on and pitch to Horner. They do this not because they want to pitch to Horner, but because they do want to set up the double play. A left-hander goes to work in the giant bullpen. This will be Kruko's first walk of the game. Bob has flied to right and bounced to third. They have a totally different outfield defense on him than do the Dodgers. They play Davis in a normal right field. Gladden is way over in left center, and Horner has all of right center to work with if he could steer one in that direction. You see the alignment there. There's one out. The bases are full of Braves. It's already 3-0. Check, swing, strike, 0-1. Oh This one a comfortable Atlanta lead. The 2 1. Caught the inside corner. Bob didn't think so, but the count even. It's two balls, two strikes. That's a big pitch for Kruka. The 2 2. Oh, I just missed inside. He's a shot at that same spot but missed it. The payoff pitch about to be made to Bob Horner with the bases loaded, one out in the fifth. He walked him and a run is in, it's four to nothing. He threw him a curveball, missed low and away, and you can see Kruko is all over the plate. Umpire Jerry Davis, he thought he had him struck out. Now Davis walks to the mound after Kruko, which is not really a smart thing, in my opinion, for an umpire to do. Zane Smith scores. He can go rest on the Atlanta bench. Ramirez moves to third, Murphy to second. Horner drives in his 36th run with the walk. And here's Harper, who's bounced to short and as Homer. Double play to second one, three out of first, and the inning is over. Harper hit it hard, but right at Uribe, and he started the double play. So out of all that, the Braves get only one. Now Kruko and Davis go at it again as Kruko tries to get to the dugout. Now Rocky Bridges is going to try to pull the umpire away from the pitcher. Can you believe this? It's supposed to be the other way around, isn't it? Jim Davenport gets out there as well. It's 4 nothing Atlanta. You're looking at Jim Davenport just having a nice peaceable chat with Jerry Davis, the home plate umpire, and Jerry Davis asking Mr. Davenport if he'd like to spend the rest of the game in the Giants' locker room. And Mr. Davenport says, 
gosh, Jerry, that'd be swell. Gee. But Davenport gets thrown out for the first time in his Major League managerial career. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning, and the Braves on the Superstation lead it four to nothing. Ernie Johnson and John Sterling with you now on Braves television as Pete and Skip go over to radio. A two-run home run by Murph, a solo shot by Terry Harper, and then the walk to Bob Horner with the bases loaded, and that was the catalyst for Davenport being thrown out right at the end of the inning. Mike Kruko got into it with home plate umpire Jerry Davis. I don't think they liked the call on the 2-2 pitch to Horner. That's Jose Uribe who leads off the Giants fifth, the eighth hitter in their lineup, grounding it foul. It'd be Uribe, Kruko, and then the top of the order. I think that's what they were arguing about, that 2-2 pitch to Horner. The 3-2 did miss, and that forced in the Braves' fourth run. Anyway, 4-0 Braves. Zane Smith tossing another shutout against the Giants. And the count 1-1 one and one on the young shortstop, Jose Uribe. Who hit a fly ball to right field his first time. Last ball is way outside, and the count 2-1. and one. A very important game for the Braves because they lost another heartbreaker in Los Angeles. How many have they lost like that the past few years? The Braves have had a good road trip. They've got to win here to make it a good road trip. Right side pop up and Glenn Hubbard makes a call and catch one away. Number 30. Now Mike Kruko is going to hit for himself even though his team is down 4 nothing in the fifth. Kruko grounded out his first time. He's had a pretty good year at bat. Was it down low ball one. Kruko has six hits in 29 times at bat. Hubby will make the play. Two way. Kuko kind of takes it easy on this trip down the line. Well, he made it to first base that time. Last time he peeled off about halfway there, and the fans let him know about it. So this time he decided he would go all the way, and he should go all the way. Yeah, it's only 90 feet. He's not running a 10K. Not running the Peach Street. Two way, and here's Dan Gladden. Gladden had a sensational half season with the Giants last year, batted well over 300 with power, stole a lot of bases, but this year is a regular. He's only hitting 219. He has two homers, 15 RBIs. Been on both times on a walk, and he got hit by a pitch, was thrown out by Bruce Benedict trying to steal last time. He takes the breaking ball low inside, ball one. Only two games in the majors today. Montreal at home beat St. Louis in 10 innings. They're a half game out. And up in Toronto, the Yankees beat the Blue Jays. The Yankees are six and a half out. Gladden fakes the butt, takes a strike. The only time Zane Smith has ever pitched against the Giants, he threw a shutout against them in Atlanta. And now he has two outs in the bottom of the fifth, leading 4 0. That should end the inning. Terry Harper in left field. Giants are set down one, two, three, and at the end of five, it's four nothing Braves. Ken Overfell is taking the first pitch down low. And he pops this one up to right center field. Danny Gladden makes the catch one away. Kobe had doubled in two trips before that fly ball. One away top of the six. Here's Glenn Hubbard. Braves lead it 4 nothing, And we'll play an hour earlier tomorrow. And Ernie, we should be on the air at about 3 o'clock Eastern time, right? 3.05. 3.05 Eastern time. Fly ball to left center field. Leonard will make the catch. And the Braves have two outs very, very quickly. Ernie Johnson, John Sterling with you on Braves television. 4 nothing ball game, Braves. 
Bob and D. Richardson are here from Lawton, Oklahoma, to watch the Braves. And Pat and Cecilia Moore are here from Dalton, Georgia. Okay. 2 A. Here's Bruce Benedict. That ball goes back to the screen. Ball one. Well, they're seeing candlestick about as good as you can see it. 81 degrees, sunny, no wind to speak of. That's up the middle and fielded by Trio. Does he get enough on the throw? No. Bruce Benedict legs out of base hit. They say things even up in this game. You don't know if it's true or not. Bob Brumley hit a bullet line drive to Oberfeld then dunked in a hit. Trio made a pretty good play on this. He's one of the best out there, but Benedict beat it. Last time up, Bruce uh, had the left fielder against the fence. Looked like it was going to be a homer. This time he gets himself an infield hit. So in that, those two cases, it even up. Here's Zane Smith at a base hit his last time and scored the Braves' fourth run. A swing and a strike. That little bloop will be caught by Uribe. And the Braves, no runs, a hit, and they leave one. At the end of five and a half, it's 4 nothing Atlanta. Tomorrow afternoon, William Bendix stars The Babe Ruth Story. 1.05 p.m. Eastern. That is tomorrow might be the hokiest baseball movie ever made. I like the part where Claire Trevor realizes he's throwing a curve because he sticks his tongue out of his mouth. That's when he was still pitching. Anyway, you'll love the movie. I like his swing. <laughs> William Bendix yeah, swing? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Mel Allen had a great line about that movie. I guess he did a lot of voiceover work. And I guess the producer or some person on the picture said to him, well, do it, you know, the way you, you, know, you did it when Ruth hit the home run. And Mel Allen said, but I was three years old then. You know, I wasn't announcing for the Yankees. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't seen it, see it. And if you're old enough, you'll laugh. And if you're not young enough, you'll love it. Manny Trio leaves off of the Giants here in the bottom of the six. You know, they used to make a lot of baseball movies and the pro ball players living in California loved it because they always got extra work. They would be in the movie. You could see some of your old teammates sitting on the bench like Gene Mock, someone like that. I, I read about that and uh, I give you some names. Uh, Hank Sauer, the yeah. giant scout was in a lot of them. Bob Lemon, Penis Lowry guys who lived out there. George Metkovich was in several. <laughs> the catfish. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 to Trio. We're in the bottom of the six. Braves lead at 4-0. Zane Smith pitching another brilliant game. Since he's been in the rotation, the Braves have been 5-2 and two in the games he started. He has won all those games. But he is their left hander in the rotation. They have found him, the Braves. Well, they went from that style of baseball movie to the other style, which is the slugger's wife, and then they got the announcers in there. Yes, yeah. and the slugger's wife, I think, might be the last of that <laughs> genre because... <laughs> The old line goes, it wasn't released, it escaped. Well, anyway, here's Manny Trio with a count of one and two at the bottom of the sixth. Zane Smith has stopped the Giants on two hits to this point. The count evens two and two. Giants have their hitters up now. After Trio, they have Chili Davis and Jeff Leonard. You know, one thing has been expressed by the Braves oh, after this pitch. That'll be caught by Dale Murphy in right center field. Claudel, Claudel will make the catch one away. Now Bruce Benedict said something to me last night. We were having a little sarsaparilla when we got up here after the game. That was a crusher again. Ernie, how many crushers in L.A. in the past few years? But Bruce said one thing. He said, we're playing good baseball. And, you know, the Braves really think that. They really think that there's a long way to go and they're going to win a lot of games and get back in it, which is a good sign, I think. They had a good month of June. Considering what they did in April and May, they had played 514 and 14, but the other stat was the ERA of the pitching staff was just a little over three. There's a crowd of the short off the bat of Davis, and Raphael throws him out two away. I think the Braves have, have learned how they have to win games. After Murphy and Horner, and every now a home run from Claudel, they don't have a lot of power on this team. They don't have a lot of deep hitting on the bench, but they have very good pitching, a very deep bullpen. 
Don't forget, Bob Horner was just getting back, getting acclimated in the first 30, 40 games. Now, he's at first base to stay. He has not made an error there in 20 games. And, well, I know I'm an optimist, but hope springs eternal. Maybe the Braves can start to win some games and see if they can make a run at the Padres in the second half. Hopefully, two-way here in the Giant Six. Jeff Leonard. Breaking ball is high, ball one. They all realize, though, they have to play much better than 500 ball. Oh, yeah. That should end the inning. Claudell comes down the right field line. And that is ruled a foul ball. The catch by Claudell and another 1-2-3 inning from Zane Smith. At the end of six innings of play, the Braves lead it 4-0. Through six, the Braves four runs, eight hits, and no errors. The Giants no runs, two hits, and no errors. Mike Kruko still in there for the Giants. Zane Smith trying to pitch a second straight shutout against San Francisco. Top of the Braves order in the seventh, led off by Claudell, and back to tell you about it, here's Ernie. Thank you, John. Claudell Washington struck out, singled, and struck out. And bounced past first foul. He had a stolen base in the third inning, then Murphy followed with a home run. Harper hit a home run in the fourth that made it three nothing and then Horner walked with the bases loaded in the fifth to make it four. Pop to short. Uribe. One down. Now Ramirez who is one for three. Ramirez has hit safely in 21 of his last 26 ball games. And the curveball almost hit him. Slim Pickens here this afternoon, maybe four or five thousand. They're fifty thousand behind last year's attendance. There are several people here rooting for the Braves, as always, as a result of the cable. One ball and strike. Two and one. Good hitters park at 365 in the alleys when the wind isn't blowing in. And there's a drive along the right field line. Let's see if they can catch up. That is a nice catch by Chili Davis. He passed from view and he went a long way for that ball and it was fair. The indication from Steve Ripley. Davis going toward the wall and catches it in fair territory. The batter's Dale Murphy. Singled, homered, and purposely passed. Curveball in there. Did he go? They'll ask for help. Ripley says no. And the fans say boo. Two away in the seventh. Outside. Murphy with 19 home runs and all but about four or five come against right handed pitching. And that's the short. And that's the first. And that's it in the top of the seventh. We go to the bottom half. Four nothing break. Bob Brenly leads it off. We go to the bottom of the seventh. He's one for two. He was robbed of a base hit in the second by Ken Oberkfell. One and oh. One 
One ball, one strike. Looks like Minton and Jeffcoat near bullpen. And that's who it is. And the one, two. Two balls and two strikes. Chris Brown to follow. The Braves are home on Thursday. We expect a, a big crowd. It's the New York Mets and also the fireworks display. The Mets are in for four, followed by Montreal three and Philadelphia for four before the All-Star break. 2-2. Two -two. Hit hard but foul past Rocky Bridges. <laughs> Very colorful third base coach. Rocky was a good ball player and infielder in his playing days. And he'll quickly tell you one of the shortstop that Pee Wee Reese wore out. Curveball inside. Rocky might be the acting manager. We weren't told who the manager is as Davenport was ejected. There's Rock. Toward third but foul again Rocky Bridges one of the infielders back in the 50s that came to the Dodgers Bobby Morgan another Don Zimmer and they all wanted to replace uh, Pee Wee Reese and Pee Wee just wore him out they Ed, just went somewhere else Eddie mixes Bob yeah. Ramazzotti yeah. it was like catches that came up behind Yogi yeah. Bridges has so many one liners Three balls and two strikes on Bob Brenly. Normally a catcher playing first today. And the payoff again is down low, ball four. So Brenly starts the bottom of the seventh with a walk. Chris Brown is doubled and grounded out. He'll be followed by Alex Trevino. Montreal won a big ball game today, beating the Cardinals in extra innings. The Yankees beat Toronto. Those are the only other afternoon games. Jeff Dedman starts throwing for Atlanta. The 1 0. Hit foul. On ball and stay. The month of June proved to the Braves how much 500 baseball does for you. They played 500 and lost two games in the race with San Diego. There's Deadman. That's toward Obergefell. He's got one down there. Two at first. I didn't think it was a double play ball. What a turn down there by Hubbard. A nice play by Obi at third. And the stretch by Horner, the ball was so slowly hit, I didn't think they had a chance for a double play. Well, the Braves really can turn it. And Hubbard makes a sensational pivot with a runner, Bob Brownlee, flying at him. And Braves just simply turn it over. Now with two down, here's Alex Trevino. And the pitch to him is outside. Curve strike. That double play by the Braves was their 91st of the year. And this is game 75. You put some significance in double plays. Especially when they're made in, in close ball games. 2 1. Fly ball center. Murphy on his horse should catch up to it. And he does. And the inning's over. 
We played seven. It's four nothing Atlanta. You'll find a variety of Braves t-shirts in the Braves Clubhouse Collection catalog. And to find the one that's right for you, send your name, address, and $1 to Braves Catalog, Post Office Box 4064, Atlanta, Georgia 30302. And you'll receive a coupon worth $1 toward your first catalog purchase. Horner leads it off. Top of the eighth, a happy birthday to a young lady I've known for a long time. Don Johnson Klein, who's watching down in Southern California. She's 30 something and she's watching with her grandmother who is also, but she's 80 something. 4,369. That's our paid attendance here today and about a thousand of them cheering for Atlanta. Horner walked with the bases loaded last time up. Do know, we talked to Benedict and a couple of other guys about that controversial home run yesterday at Dodger Stadium. You remember the one Washington hit? High pop. Trevino should catch it. Benny Dunn. And we talked that R.J. Reynolds might have had it in his glove, looked like on the replay, and threw it back on the field, so therefore it would be in play. But the players felt that the ball went over his glove and hit something and bounced back on the field. And I believe that's how the umpire called it because it took a while for the ball to get back on the field. Here's Terry Harper who homered in the fourth. And the latest report on on Steve Howe ball outside is this. You may or may not have known. So we'll pass along the information that first to pitch low was bad enough missing the ball game for Steve Howe, but we understand that he was the chairperson, the chairman of a Boy Scout banquet on Saturday night. There's a fly ball left center, not going to carry. Leonard makes the catch, two down. And he was in charge of the banquet, Steve Howe, and he got Tom Lasorda to be the speaker and several of the players to be guests at the banquet Saturday night. He did not show for that. And he did not show up, I believe. He came home last night. And the latest report is that he will be having a meeting today with Peter O'Malley, the president of the Dodgers. He was placed on a restricted list. Low to Oberkfell. Oberkfell doubled, struck out, and flied out. He's one for three. Two and all. Two balls in a strike. Kruko quickly back. And it's right off his glove. Can he throw him out? Yeah, how about that? Knocked his glove off. Chased it down the ball and threw him out. A good play by Kruko and he robbed Ken Obergfell. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Four to nothing. We'll take another look as we go out. This is a bullet. Took his glove right off. He said, I'll still get you, and he does. Bottom of the eighth is coming your way. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. Jose Uribe will lead it off. Rob Deere will be a pinch hitter for the pitcher. Uribe is 0 for 2. Lane Smith trying to shut out the Giants for the second time this year. Jeff Dedman continues to throw for Atlanta. A little bit high with a fastball. 1 and 0. Deer on deck. Two and now. Oh. Eddie Haas won't wait long and take any chances. He's got a four to nothing lead, bottom of the eighth, and that is high. Three and zero. Oh. Braves have had a 
couple of tough ones get away in the eighth and ninth, the kind that really get to you. That's a strike, three and one. Toward Obert fell off his glove. Can Ramirez throw him out? Nope. That's going to go as a boot on Obergefell, who doesn't make many. G5. It was hit hard by Arebe. And Obi reaching out, had it hit off the, the just the top of his glove. Normally he gets that ball and throws him out, so they give Ken an error, and here's Rob Deer. Big strong guy, Deer, batting only 213, has three homers and nine RBI. Got the big uppercut swing, and the first curveball goes in the dirt, and that'll be a wild pitch. And the Giants have something started here in the bottom of the eighth with a runner at second and nobody out. Deer has spanned 19 times and 61 at bats. And those are his stats in the minor leagues, too. He, he would hit 30 homers or so in the minors, but also strike out 150, 170 times. Foul away. One ball, one strike. They've got Minton up, and he will be their next pitcher, probably, although they still have Jeff Goat standing alongside. Now the 1 1. Toward Oberkfell. Looks the runner back and throws to first. That's one down. And Dan Gladden is a hitter. He's been hit by a pitch, walk, was caught stealing on a great throw by Benedict, then he flied to center. Anytime you catch one of these speed merchants, everything has worked perfectly for you. And he was out easily when he attempted a steal in the third. He had stolen 20 bases, been caught only five times. Gladden went eight, I should say. Krupko went eight, and he allowed four runs all to earn. Couple of walks, one intentional, four strikeouts. Gladden has also gone eight. Center field. He's at the plate, the 1 0. And that is a strike. A big promotion to pack Three Rivers Stadium Sunday was a success from the standpoint of getting 31,000. Strike call, they have 31,000. Second largest crowd that they've had at Pittsburgh games. They lost the ball game, however, and got booed. That can happen anywhere. They've had a tough season at Pittsburgh. One and two. Foul away. Mike Schmidt, today's paper, said he's tired of the fans booing him in Philadelphia. He has not had a Mike Schmidt year. Pass along these little tidbits to you. Pete Rose is now 39 hits away. And breaking that record by Cobb. He got two yesterday and a game winner against San Diego. Well, he just keeps it up. Curveball is inside two and two. You know, I saw his game winning hit. He, he really is something. First of all, Pete Rose at 44 is second in the league in on base percentage. He came up in the ninth inning off the goose. He took the goose to left field, right between third and short, right where he took Bruce Suter in that ball game to tie it up. I mean, he really is something. He should be honored by by baseball this year as he breaks Ty Cobb's record. Got his team to within four first place. Yeah, he's as player manager. Isn't that something? 2-2. Two -two. Almost hit him. 3-2. and two. A runner at second base. One down. 
And the three two. Fly ball lazy in the left center Harper should catch it. That's two down. And the batter Manny Trio. You know it's an unusual shutout being pitched by Zane Smith. He's given up only two hits. Ernie, they were back to back. Back in the back in the fourth inning. Talk about a young man taking advantage of an opportunity. It's Zane Smith when Perez and Barker both hurt. An opening on the pitching staff. Took him out of the bullpen and look what's happened. He has pitched excellent baseball. Not necessarily going nine innings because few pitchers do today, but he's pitched past the sixth inning just about every time. There's a hit to right. And the shutout is gone. Trio singles to right. See if Eddie Haas makes a move. <laughs> Two outs. Davis is the batter. And here comes Eddie Haas. That might be it. Smith has pitched into the eighth inning. And a three run lead. And I'll tell you a relief pitcher likes it when the manager says I'm going to give you a little bit of a cushion. You can afford to make a mistake. And you're still going to be OK. Instead of waiting to the winning runs or tying runs are aboard. So Deadman will be called upon. In a 4 1 game. A runner at first and two down. And a nice hand for Zane Smith from everybody here. Zane Smith making his way toward the third base dugout. And you watch all his pals greet him. He's pitched another good ball game. A chance to win his second on this trip. The glad hand all around. And while Jeff Dedman warms up, we'll break away for this message. And Deadman and Smith. No, I haven't, as a matter of fact. And uh, if they pal around, they obviously <laughs> communicate with hand signals. But they're actually, they're two terrific young men. And Deadman has quietly gone about having a, a super year. 4 0, ERA 1.64. He has no saves. He's got a chance for one right here with the circumstances as they are. This is his 24th game. And lately he has just been phenomenal out there and Eddie Haas wants him to have one more great outing to nail this one down and give the Braves a seven and four road trip. Tomorrow Bedrosian goes against Jim Gott. Chili Davis will turn around and bat lefty. He's 0 for 3 right handed against Smith. Better hitter left handed 276 versus 241. And the pitch is fouled away. Bruce Suter gets up and starts throwing in Atlanta's bullpen. Suter suffered the loss yesterday. As the Dodgers came from behind. Tagging him for a couple of runs in the eighth on that record setting home run by Pedro Guerrero Guerrero has a fair chance of being the player of the month in the National League he only hit 15 homers <laughs> he has a chance yes. he, has a chance. he has a chance to be unanimous and uh, and John Tudor has a, a fair chance to be the pitcher of the month six and oh with an ERA of about 1.3 St. Louis Cardinals left it one one Popped him up foul. Back out of play. You know, when we saw the Cardinals, Tudor couldn't win at all. And he was pitching very good baseball, but he, you know, the days he pitched, he didn't get any runs. He'd make a mistake, whatever. And he said, I really don't want to be told that I'm pitching well. I want some wins. Well, he yeah. straightened out. And you have a story about that, too. I think I did tell it, but his high school catcher saw a flaw in his delivery watching on yeah. PBS <laughs> and back in New Hampshire. And, uh, they talked about it and he changed his style a bit and look what's happened. 
foul away. One ball, two strikes. I believe the flaw in Tudor's delivery was the fact that when he was pitching before, he had a slight pause in his delivery. And uh, he had lost that. So he went back to the slight pause right in the middle as he's winding up to get the momentum toward the plate and uh, it's work wonders. And of course, it uh, doesn't take much sometimes to, to straighten you out mentally. Even if there's not an awful lot that is done, you just feel better. Therefore, you pitch better. It's a mental game, folks. One ball, two strikes. Popped him up. Let's see if Benedict's got a play. He has. That's it. Davis fouls to the catcher. We've played eight. It's a three-run lead, Atlanta. The new pitcher is Mike Jeffcoat. This is his debut in the National League. He has been in the American League, pitching a bit with Cleveland. One year with the Indians, he won five, lost two, ERA 2.99. Has one save in the American League. He's 25 years old. And he faces Glenn Hubbard, who pops it up right side foul. Renly is going to have to make a circus catch or something. And Chili Davis ran up over the mound and almost hurt himself. The ball falls free. All on one. We look at that. Chili Davis stumbling over the mound. Boy, you can really get hurt that way. You can really turn an ankle if your spikes dig in. Chili's okay, thank goodness. We were wondering if Jeff Goat is the son of Hal Jeff Goat, is he? Well, I have this to report to you. I combed through the press box, Ernie. <laughs> Outside. I asked people on the Braves, people on the Giants, people in the newspapers, and no one knows. However, it's not mentioned anywhere, so uh, we'll have to ask Mike Jeff Goat. Someone said that he was the son of Hal Jeff Goat, who pitched for several years with the Chicago Cubs and a couple of other ball clubs. Three and one. Well, you played against him. We ought to get a close up and see if you can notice any resemblance. If we get a close up, you'd see a tough bulldog type. <laughs> By the way, his dad, if it, if it is his father, his dad was a good pitcher. And Sinker a, ball and type and, a, and, and an outfielder, outfielder for a while. Pitcher, yeah. Yeah. That is if Hal Jeffco is his father. Right. If not, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Mike goes. Here's a three two. Foul away. He was in that deal that sent Johnny LeMaster over to Cleveland. Well, Benedict on deck. So there was a heck of a trade for Cleveland. That's going to be a base hit to right by Glenn Hubbard. Hubbard's first hit of the afternoon. For those who don't know, Cleveland gave up this promising young left-hander for shortstop Johnny LeMaster. They decided to move Julio Franco from short to second. He'd been making a lot of errors at short. So they played LeMaster at short, played Franco at second. Franco told him six games later, I don't want to play second base. They said, okay. Moved him back to short and got rid of LeMaster. Benedict. The runner is going, and it's a fair ball. And a nice play by Brown at third. They played hit and run. Hubbard's now at second. Albert Hall is going to come on as a pinch hitter for Jeff Dedman, so that means that Suter will be in the ball game in the bottom of the ninth. Benedict out. Third to first. The announcement on Albert Hall. He'll bat righty. Had a big base hit 
in Houston to win a ball game and almost squeezed one through yesterday, but it was caught by the left fielder Pedro Guerrero for the Dodgers and Perry was doubled off third to end that ball game. Doubled off second rather. Pitch is low. Hall batting 192. No homers and one RBI. Washington on deck. Strike call, one ball, one strike. Now the one one. Hit foul, pass third. Let's see. Dane Smith went seven and two thirds. Gave up only three hits, one run unearned. Three walks and a strikeout. And he stands to be the winner if the bullpen can hold in the bottom of the ninth. It would be his fifth win. Fouled away. Hubbard's at second base. He singled, went down there on a ground out. Towards second. Trio to first, two out. Over to third comes Hubbard. Oh, well, this place is quiet. Not Claude L. Washington. Washington with a base hit in the third. One for four with a stolen base. It was his eighth of the year. Now it's lefty against lefty. Look out. Fastball. He was late on it. Our next tryout camp will be next Saturday, July 6th at Greenville, South Carolina, Greenville Braves Park. That's Saturday, July 6th, starting at 9 o'clock. If you have aspirations of becoming a professional baseball player and never been given the opportunity and think you have ability, turn out. You never know. We've had excellent results so far as far as attendance goes. Here's the one one. Missed inside. The Braves got two in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth. The Giants picked up a run in the eighth. We're playing now in the ninth. And the pitch. Foul away. They're shading Washington to left field. Claude will tell you that against the lefty, he'd like to try to go out that way because they do throw a lot of breaking balls away. 2-2, two -two, there's one, and he missed it. That's it for the Braves. They go to the bottom. 4-1 at left. Bruce Suter's a new pitcher. Leonard will lead it off. Suter trying for his 15th save. His ERA 3.51. He's won four, lost three. Leonard is 0 for three. The 
Here's a 1-0. 2-0. He's hit left. Jeff Leonard. Now the batter, Bob Brindley. Brindley is one for two. Pitch is low. Braves bullpen. Forster on the left, Camp on the right. The 1 0. Strike call. to breathe a sigh of relief. He's ahead in the count one and two. And the pitch. Low. Two and two. Sooners capitalized on 14 of his 19 save opportunities. That means that 19 chances he saved 14 and didn't do the job on five, and that is hit foul past third. Chris Brown is on deck. Tomorrow it's Steve Bedrosian against Jim Gott. We're on an hour earlier. Airtime will be 3.05 Eastern time. Here's the 2-2, two -two. foul away. The Braves with four runs, nine hits, one error. The Giants, one run, four hits, and no errors to this point. Suter trying to get that first out that's so important in a game like this. 2-2. Two -two. Line toward left center field. Harper's got it. Boy, that ball's hit, but Harper caught it. Out number one. And the batter, Chris Brown. Brown has doubled in three tries. Hit into a double play last time up. The first pitch to him is fouled away. Trevino's on deck. He may or may not bat. We'll wait and see. A little bit low. One ball, one strike. Look out. This just got away. Fans boo a bit, but they know that Suter in this spot is not going to be wasting any pitches. He's got a three-run lead with one down. Brown goes over, talking over with Trevino. Two balls and a strike, one out. Braves trying for their seventh win on this trip and their 34th overall. It would put them six games under 500. Got to get to 500 before you think about winning any pennant. Here's a 2-1. Down low. 
Three and one. Now, another base runner. The tying run comes to the plate. And the three one. Foul away. No one knows it better than Suter. These guys know who's where and why. Especially when you've had a career of relief pitching. Forster continues to throw. Camp is ready if they need him. Here's the three two. Down low, ball four. Two on, one out. Trevino will hit. Uribe is on deck. The first pitch to him. A ball. Now the one out. -oh. A ball. First and second, one down. And the 2 0 -oh pitch. Steve Wright. Mitten starts throwing in their bullpen. Leonard's at second. Brown is at first. And Suter with a 2-1 to Trevino, who swings and misses two and two. Now a 2-2. Two -two. High fly. Murphy should catch it. Under it in left center. Two away. Uribe was out there, but I don't think he's going to bat. Rasich is the pinch hitter. Gary Rasich for Uribe. This guy's got a little sting in that bat. Rasich with runners at first and second. Two out. Rasich batting average 167. No homers and 10 RBIs. Minor league hitter, he hit a lot of homers. The first pitch is low. The 1 0. -oh. Swung on, miss. Suter trying to nail it down for Zane Smith. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on, miss. It's 1-2. and two. He needs one more out. Benedict with a sign. Here's a 1-2. Just missed outside two and two. Two on, two out. Nail biting time. Two two. He got him. Braves win. A strikeout of Rasich. A good finish for Suter. And the final score: Braves four, Giants one. The Braves had four runs, nine hits, one error. Giants had one run. Four hits. No errors. Smith wins his fifth. He's five and four. Kruko is now five and six for Kruko. And the save goes to Suter. His 15th save. Murphy and Harper hit home runs. And I understand from Mark Goldsmith, our director, we'll look at the first homer by Murphy. A two-run shot back in the third. That made it 2 nothing. It was his 19th home run of the year, and it went to right field. He's hit all his home runs but four off righty. Here's Harper. That makes it 3 nothing. as Harper goes to left. It was his seventh home run of the year. And the final Braves run came right here. Ball four, bases loaded to Bob Horner. And then Jim Davenport, on that particular call, was so incensed in between innings, 
that he was thrown out of the ball game by Jerry Davis, the first time that the Giant manager has been ejected this year. And this is out number three. Boy, did that split finger fastball go down for Bruce Suter. He gets Rasich and preserves the win. The Braves a winner four and one. They are now seven and four on this road trip. And they look forward to the final game tomorrow. And we'll be with you at 3.05. Steve Bedrosian against Jim Gott. Final score once again. Braves four, Giants one. Until tomorrow, for John Sterling, Skip Carey and Pete Van Weer, and this is Ernie Johnson from Candlestick Park in San Francisco. And on this winning afternoon, so long, everybody.